So this last concept we're going to talk about is called the factor theorem. And we'll be using this idea in the very next section when we want to be able to solve our polynomials. So we're going to practice it right now. And it has to do with taking a polynomial and kind of dividing it up or separating it into its factors to find the zeros of the function. Okay, so let's put that into practice right here. We're going to use synthetic division to divide this polynomial right here by x plus 1. And then we're going to use those results to find all of the zeros of the function. Okay, so synthetic division by x plus 1. So we're going to start by taking my plus 1, move it out here, do my under flipped over house thing, and I've got the coefficients to write down. So I have a 1, minus 2, minus 1, 2. And remember, when we do synthetic division, we start by bringing the 1 down. So negative 1 times 1 is a negative 1. Add straight down, I get negative 3. Negative 1 times a negative 3 is a positive 3. Add straight down, I get 2. Negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2, and this time, first example in all of them, I get a remainder of 0. Now that's pretty big. That says because my remainder is 0, okay, because I have a remainder of 0, then I know x plus 1 has to be a root or a factor. Remember, we had all sorts of examples so far where I didn't have a zero for a remainder. I still divided it by some factor, but this is special. As soon as I divide it by a factor, or something like this, and I get zero for a remainder, then that factor is a root. So what do we have now? We know that my polynomial right here can be can start to be written as a product of its factors. So I have the function f of x. I know that x plus 1 is a factor. And when I divided my polynomial by x plus 1, I got this right here, didn't I? So that means, oops, that means I now have x squared minus 3x plus 2 as the remaining factor, right? Because if I take this factor and multiply it by this second trinomial, I would get back what I started. Okay, we know that so far. So the idea that we want to do right now is, can I break this down any further? Can I now take this trinomial and break it down into factors as well? Yes, I can. Okay, I have a trinomial. This is a quadratic term, and I know from previous lessons, I know how to break that down. So we're going to rewrite this as x plus 1, that was one factor, and then I have this. How does that factor? Well, the second sign is positive, so we have two of the first, so I have two negatives. This breaks down into an x and an x, so what are the factors of two that add to give me three? And that's a one and a 2. So what did I do? I took this third degree polynomial, which is four terms, and I rewrote it as, whoops, sorry, I rewrote it as the product of these factors or these terms right here. <clears throat> that allows me to then use that zero product property and take each of the factors, set them equal to zero, x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, and these all become x is negative 1, x is positive 1, x is positive 2. All three of these numbers are the zeros, they're the zeros of my function f. They're all zeros of my function f. <clears throat> I wouldn't have known that, though, unless I was able to take my polynomial and put it in its factored form. If you think back to the previous lessons, those graphs that we all 
uh, <coughs> that we worked on. Remember, the zeros of my function are where it crosses the x-axis. So let's take a second and let's look at this function. I put it into the calculator already. And let me see if I can move this over just a little bit. I don't think I can. All right, we'll just zoom in on it. So here is my function. I put it into my calculator already. And below you can see that we found roots or zeros of my function to be at negative 1, positive 1, and 2. And on my graph you can see that we're crossing, which is a zero, we are crossing the x-axis at negative 1, positive 1, and 2. Also, if I were to go look at the table of this function, I would see that if I have a zero of the function, so if my um, x value is a zero, then the y equals zero. Let me say that again. Remember, if x is equal to negative one, then y is equal to zero, and that's what I have here. x is equal to positive one, y is equal to zero x is equal to positive 2, y is equal to 0. And so I could see all of those things on my table as well. My table is going to show me where the zeros are at. So wherever uh, my y value equals to 0, then the x coordinate is the position where it's crossing the x axis. And we're going to really get into this a lot more in the next section.